everybody, welcome to the video. It's Friday, April 30th. We're breaking down this monster 14 game slate that we have over on DraftKings. Also, got quite a few good aces to pick from in the pitching department today, which always makes an interesting slate. So, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you are as well. And if you find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. While you're at it, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. So, you miss out whenever I post new content. And if you don't follow me over on social media, the handle is in the bottom hand corner of your screen. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, link is down below for that. If you want to join the community of several hundred members, although if you do, wait until the beginning of the month so you don't get double charged over on Patreon. But you get projections, optimizer, ownership projections, rankings, cheat sheets, data sheets, Discord community, all that fun stuff. You can do stacks, about 150 laps, whatever you want to do. All of that is available in the link down below. But I think that's it for the shameless plug. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we will start with the pitchers and move on to the bats. And the pitchers are fun to talk about. If you guys watched yesterday's video, besides like Nolan, Trevor Bauer, the pitching just wasn't that really fun to talk about. But when you got guys like Shane Bieber, Garrett Cole, you Darvish all on the same slate and all very viable options, it's pretty fun to talk about these guys because they're just such excellent pitchers. Shane Bieber, Garrett Cole... I'd say two of the three best pitchers in the entire league because you got to throw in Jacob DeGrom in there as well. He just is not on the slate. And you Darvish, you can make a case for him being in the top five as well. Ever since it was the last year or the year before that, he's been absolutely excellent. The second half of the year before last year because the first part of that, I remember he's having some major control issues walking a ton of guys. But he's got that under wraps, and he has shown excellent control since then. And we obviously know he's got great strikeout upside, and he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball. But... We'll start off with Shane Bieber, $10,700. I'm an Indians fan, so you guys always know I have a nice bias towards Shane Bieber. But hey, to be honest, it's always a good thing to be biased against Shane Bieber because he just doesn't really have bad baseball games. And he had his lowest K, uh, K game of the entire season last week, which is the last start, I should say, at 9. I mean, the guy's been in double-digit Ks pretty much every single start this year besides one, even then he just missed it by one. And there's nothing bad to say about Shane Bieber. Maybe the matchup here versus the White Sox on the road is not... Can I say the White Sox? White Sox, White Sox on the road here, but it's still Shane Bieber. He can overpower any single lineup he has given. Looking at the Vegas numbers, it's only a 2.97 implied team total against him. Slight favorite. We know the Indians' offense isn't the greatest, so that's the one bad thing about rostering Shane Bieber is he's not always going to get you that four-point win bonus over on DraftKings, even if he does pitch. Just you can easily have 15 strikeouts here, give up one run, and you would lose the game, you wouldn't get that win bonus because the Indians offense outside of a couple guys like Jose Ramirez and Framel Reyes really isn't the greatest thing out there. So that's one thing you always have to watch out for. And because Garrett Cole, I mean, the Yankees offense, while it hasn't been the greatest this year, it's overall a very good hitting team. You got guys like Stanton, Judge, LeMayu, and the list goes on. So you kind of have to expect him to probably be more likely to get the win, which might give you an added lean to go towards Garrett Cole today in cash games over Shane Bieber and actually I do think more people will play Garrett Cole today over Shane Bieber I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to double spend up I mean yeah since it's such a big slate there's gonna be plenty of value bats but there's also some good expensive bats that I'd like to get in so if you can make it work and go double spend up today I don't think that's a bad option it's just we have a really cheap pitcher today as you can see in the bottom of the screen here below seven thousand dollars in a good matchup versus Seattle so I'm thinking a lot of people are going to go one spend-up pitcher and one cheap pitcher like Andrew Heaney today to make things very flexible, which is certainly looking like a really good way to go, but we'll get into that later. But anyway, I went on in a tangent there in Shane Bieber, but I still like him here, even though the matchup versus the White Sox isn't as soft as it is for Garrett Cole versus Detroit at home. But dating back to last season for Shane Bieber, about 104 pitches per game. You never have to worry about a pitch count with this guy, which is always a nice thing because you get those... You know, extra innings that some pitchers just don't get, and you always get any little point counts over on DraftKings, but a 1.9 ERA, 2.18 XFIP, 2.5 Sierra, 40.5% K rate, walks 7.7%, which doesn't look good compared to the rest of these pitchers, but it's still fine, nothing to worry about, 14.2 Ks per nine, only a 165 batting average given up, and a 109 ISO, so yeah, I mean, what downside do you have with Shane Bieber here? Probably nothing. I mean, the matchup versus the White Sox specifically, only a 20% K rate to righties, 10% walk rate, and some overall actually some pretty solid numbers. So that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Garrett Cole over Shane Bieber, but it's Shane Bieber, guys. He can overpower any lineup. Don't care. I mean, maybe if it was the Dodgers, I'd probably lean away from that just because it's the Dodgers. But even then, I always give elite pitching the advantage over a decent team or even a great team. And the White Sox, I mean, so far this year, they haven't exactly been great. Yeah, there's some great bats in the lineup, but Shane Bieber, you can use them in any format. 
Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole ten thousand five hundred dollars. He's gonna be your chalky SP one today, I would assume, because if you're not double spending up, I would personally prefer Garrett Cole because one, he's two hundred dollars cheaper. He gets a much softer matchup here versus Detroit. Lower team total against them, much heavier favorites, 76% chance for a win compared to Shane Bieber at 57, and that's no knock against Bieber, it's just the Indians' offense isn't quite as good as the New York Yankees, unfortunately. And a 9K prop over in Vegas, which is only half a, half a total lower than Shane Bieber here, so nothing that's really too drastic in my opinion. And looking at some of the underlying numbers here, not quite as good as Shane Bieber, but I mean, pretty darn close, 100 pitches per game, 2.4 year rate, 2.98 XFIP. 2.7 uh, Sierra, 35.5% K. This just goes to show how good Shane Bieber's been since last year because Gary Cole is an elite level pitcher with some amazing numbers. But even these numbers, I don't want to say look pedestrian to Bieber, but they're definitely a, a notch lower. But no issues with Garrett Cole. Yeah, he can give you a, give up a little bit of power. So maybe a, he gives up a random lefty solo shot here. But even then, he should have around 10 strikeouts in this game, if not more. And if you're looking at the Tiger splits, versus righties so far this season. They've actually been much worse versus lefties, but again, smaller sample sizes, but still a 27% K rate to righties, 7% walk rate, 89 WRC plus, well, but below 300 as well as their on-base percentage. So loving me some Garrett Cole, probably your chalk SP1. I am recording this the night beforehand, so I've not looked at my ownership projections yet or anything like that because it's way too early to do that. But my hunch right now is that most people will go up with Garrett Cole. Then you Darvish, $9,500. So he's viable as an SP2 paired with a, either a Shane Bieber or Garrett Cole. If you don't want to go all the way down to a guy like Nathan Eobaldi or Andrew Heaney today, personally, really like Andrew Heaney as a real cheap SP2 and a good matchup. But you Darvish, a little bit cheaper, and he kind of keeps you around that $20,000 uh, threshold if you do go the Garrett Cole route. And it's a Decent matchup versus the Giants as a righty. Because versus lefties, the Giants have actually been one of the better teams in baseball. So just this, just for something to keep in mind later on when the New York Giants, not the New York Giants, sorry, I was watching the NFL draft, so it got in my mind a little bit. But the San Francisco Giants, when they face lefties, look at some of the numbers this season. Only an 18% K rate, 12% walk rate, ISO close to 200, 328 on base percentage, and overall some really good numbers. So keep that in mind when the Giants face a lefty, but... They are facing a righty tonight and one of the better righties in the entire league. And that strikeout rate goes all the way up to 27% versus righties. 89 WRC plus and the numbers are just much worse off. So definitely prefer righties versus the Giants. And you Darvish, one of the better ones in baseball. 31% K rate since last season. 209 ERA, 3.04 XFIP, which is a run higher than his ERA. So maybe getting a little bit lucky there. But still, you can't really complain with, complain with a 3.04 XFIP, which is kind of right on par with Garrett Cole. He doesn't really walk, guys. So... I could definitely like you, Darvish, more as a tournament play because the Giants have not been terrible this year by any means. They actually have a pretty good record over in the NL West. But only 3.1 implied team total for them. Pretty heavy favorite. 8K prop over in Vegas. Pitcher Friendly Park in Petco as well. I also think the Padres are a halfway decent stack today. So I do think you, Darvish, should be able to pick up a winning at that four point bonus, which can always go a long way. Then getting into our SP2 options here Nathan Eovaldi, 8,200 bucks. I just saw my spreadsheet updated really quick. I'm wondering if it loaded the splits. Nope, not yet. See, I don't know why the pitcher splits uh, righty versus righties are not loading right now, but hopefully they do at some point, but nothing really too important as per this video. It's just bothering me in the back of my head. But anyway, Nathan Eovaldi gets a good matchup here versus the Rangers. This park tends to you know, lean towards pitching, being favorable to pitching. It's not like the old Texas park where it's a hitter's paradise whenever it was super warm. I mean, it's obviously not like you're pitching and it's like like the trop or anything like that, but still, it's a good matchup here versus Texas. They're a team that has been struggling versus Ruddy so far this season with a 30.8% K rate, only a 150 team ISO with a decent 104 WRC plus. But outside of a couple bats in this lineup, I mean, who are you really scared of outside of Joey Gallo? Yeah, guys like Willie Calhoun, Nick Solak, and a couple other guys are okay bats. But Nathan Eovaldi, he's a guy that's been sporting a 25% K rate since last season. We you know he's got good uh, velocity on his fastball, 3.28 exit, which is pretty good. 3.4 Sierra, team total below four against him. Pretty heavy favorite. Do you like the Red Sox stack tonight in a 6K prop over in Vegas? I know he kind of struggled in his last start versus Seattle, which was a more of a favorable matchup. But for a guy that doesn't really walk many guys, I don't think he's going to get you into too much trouble here versus the Rangers. And I think he's a fine tournament SP2 today because a chalky SP2, my assumption as of like 12.30, 1 a.m. the night before the, the slate starts. My hunch is that Andrew Heaney 
is going to be very popular, especially because if people are looking at game logs, his last start, he had 30 and a half points versus Houston, which is a much tougher matchup. And his game log this year isn't that bad. You know, he had a bad first start versus the White Sox uh, to start the season on April 2nd. But besides that, he's had 32 points, 17 points, and 30 and a half points. The strikeouts have been good as well, sitting at 9, 6, and 10. Also got all the way up to 101 pitches in his last start. Andrew Heaney's a guy that, you know, you can kind of worry about him going super deep into games. But, you know, if he's pitching well, they're not too afraid to leave him out there and go around 100 pitches. And we've seen that last start, like I just mentioned, didn't walk any guys either, which in his previous starts, he did block 3, 2, and 2, which I don't like that. But he's also another guy that will give up quite a bit of fly balls and hard contact. But this matchup versus Seattle as a lefty, not too bad. Actually, a pretty favorable spot here. So their numbers versus lefties this season, it's a good strikeout matchup. They're striking out 28.8% of the time. They're walking quite a bit, but their other underlying numbers aren't amazing. So Andrew Heaney at 6800 bucks. He is very cheap. And if you want to play one of these stud pitchers like Shane Bieber, Garrett Cole, or even you Darvish today, you want to spend it for some other bats as well. Andrew Heaney's your guy. He is just way too cheap, in my opinion. You don't have to play him today, but he definitely makes a lot of things work. And only 3.67 applied team total against him. He has a slight favorite and a 6.5K prop over in Vegas as well. And since last season, sporting about a 28% K rate, 3.76 Sierra, which has been in part with his XFIP. So yeah, mainly a price and matchup play here, but there's certainly a lot of upside there because he does have a decent K rate. That being said, that's kind of it for the pitching. So let's move on to the bats. And as per usual, we'll start with the catchers, move around the diamond and hit the outfield as well. So there's, I think, a couple teams without totals yet. I think it's the Dodgers-Brewers game, and then we don't have the Braves and the Blue Jays game, which is looking like it's going to be one of the best spots for offense today because they're playing in, well, not, they're not playing in Toronto. I know that said the home team right here is Toronto, so you would assume the Toronto Park, but they're actually playing in Florida because, you know, you can't go to Canada, you know, guys, all the COVID issues. So they're playing in Florida, which that stadium is definitely way more friendly to hitters than it is pitchers and we have two I would say iffy pitchers on the mound today both lefties and Drew Smiley and Robbie Ray but Robbie Ray he can be a big wild card because when he's on his game he's got good strikeout stuff and he can definitely mow down a lineup but when he's off of his game he can walk six seven guys like we saw that early in the season he had to start with six walks he'll give up plenty of power and when that slider's not working his wipeout pitch it's bad time for Robbie Ray because he can't live on the fastball all day so I definitely like the Braves here, and this park is definitely going to give me a real nice lean on wanting to play the Braves over Robbie Ray having a great game here because he's the guy that will give up some fly balls, hard contact, and some power as well. So Travis Darnell, while he hasn't been amazing this season, he's still an overall really good hitting catcher. I would assume the Braves have a team total above five here. I wouldn't see why it would be below that unless Vegas wants to give a lot of respect to Robbie Ray, which I don't understand why they would want to. So... I'm going to assume the Braves have the highest team total today because the ones that the other ones I have on my sheet right now, I'm seeing 4.87, 4.79, and then a lot of threes and a lot of low fours. And we're talking some good offenses as well, like Boston versus Ari Har is only at 4.79. Maybe that rises throughout the day, but I have to imagine the Braves and the Blue Jays will probably be both both above five. So I'm assuming this is going to be the best place to go for offenses today because, like I said, two. Shaky pitchers. I mean, Drew Smiley's not terrible. Robbie Ray's not an absolute garbage can, but they they can definitely have some weaknesses. So Travis Arnold, like him, prime spot in the order. I do like the Braves quite a bit today. Tucker Barnhart, forty five hundred bucks in a good spot versus a lefty and Jake Arrieta. Also playing Great American Small Park, which is always favorable to hitting. Also to lefty power as well. And Tucker Barnhart's been playing very well this season. Sixty plate appearance sample size, but he's batting three hundred two with a wOBA just shy of four hundred, with an ISO above two hundred, with the WRC plus close to. 115. Arietta is always a guy that's been struggling versus lefties the past few seasons. Just doesn't really have great striking, not strikeout, but, well, yeah, I guess strikeout, but great swing and miss up these days, especially to the lefties. So I can definitely get behind some of the lefties in the Cincinnati lineup, like Mike Moustakis, uh, Tucker Barnhart. I was going to say, you hear Suarez, but he's on the right, but he's a righty. So Jesse Winker, Tyler Naquin, all these guys, even Joey Votto, they are viable, but they're also very expensive as well. And then Denny Jansen, $2,000 if you just want an absolute YOLO punt catcher. This is the best position to usually spend down for the most part because I hate spending up for catchers unless it's maybe a guy like Travis Darno. But even then, it feels kind of gross because I was, I mean, if you pay nearly $5,000 for Darno, you're like, well, I could have got Aaron Judge or Aaron Colorado State at a very similar price point. So, so it's kind of hard to spend up all the way for catcher and feel good about it. But if we're doing stacks, 
Sometimes you just want to fit them in. But Jansen, he has been awful this year. I mean, he's been absolutely putrid. Negative 36 WRC plus, 023 ISO, 114 Woba, and a 045 batting average. You guys can look the numbers yourself. I realize you can't see them on the screen right now, but yeah, but some pretty putrid numbers for Danny Jansen. Absolutely awful. Only a 21% hard contact rate as well. He's getting a lot of fly balls, but doing absolutely nothing with them. But 2000 bucks, and if you are going double spin up at pitcher today, Jansen's one of those guys that can kind of help you out in that category to get some more expensive bats in your lineup. Dropping out of first base, Jansen's teammate, Vlad, 5700 bucks. I know he tripled on two games ago, then didn't really do anything whatsoever the next game, but he's very expensive. But if you are stacking up the Blue Jays, which I do think are a very viable stack today, I think they're in a pretty good spot. And this season, Vlad's been great. 346 batting average, 40 Woba, 321 ISO, and a 218 WRC+. Plus. And if we take a look at Smiley splits since last season, Again, I don't really want to pick on him too much here. It's mainly just a park thing, but a 4.8 ERA. XFIP in Sierra is a lot better, but over a run lower and a 32% K rate. But the past couple games haven't been amazing for Smiley, and this is a good Blue Jays lineup, especially with getting George Springer back in. So I'm going to give the advantage to them, even though Drew Smiley is not the worst thing in the world. It's just such a hitter-friendly park, so I'm going to have a hard time passing up any Blue Jays here. Eric Hosmer, 4400 bucks going against Logan Webb. Anytime Hosmer's facing a righty, I think he's a viable option, especially at that mid-4K price point, hitting in a really good lineup. I mean, star so lineup. You got Hosmer, you got Manny Machado, Tatis, Trent Grisham, Jake Cronenworth's good. Cronenworth's just one of those guys I like to lean on for the most part. I just absolutely flipped my phone off the desk. I don't know if you guys saw that, but anyway, talking about Cronenworth, he's just one of those solid contact hitters that I like at the price point. He's just hitting on a good lineup, and he's a cheap part of that lineup. But anyway... Hosmer, so far this season, he's betting 299. That has been dipping recently. I think it was up to 330 at one point. Now we're down below 300. But, I mean, he's, he's still fine here. Logan Webb's not a scary pitcher. So I don't like the park we're in at San Diego, but it's it's fine. You can stack San Diego pretty much everywhere for the most part. So I do think they're a contrarian stack tonight because that 4.4 apply team total is not going to get anyone too excited. Then CJ Crone, 4,200 bucks. Going against Madison Bumgarner is coming off a... Well, it's not technically a no-hitter because I know it's been a big uh, discussion I've seen on Twitter pretty much every single day. I listen to it on podcast, TV, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, not technically a no-hitter, but he had seven no-hit innings. It was a double-header, though, so technically he went the full game with a no-hitter, but, you know, you can't really count it because it wasn't a full nine innings. And you never know what can happen in the next two innings because it's a substantial amount of time, and, you know, the later you get into a game, pitchers are going to fall off for the most part, so I guess... I mean, I guess I get it. But anyway, Madison Bumgarner, he's been kind of sucky versus righties the past couple of seasons. So you can obviously play CJ Krohn. CJ Krohn's always been a guy I like using versus lefties. Looking at his split specifically versus lefties, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but I got a lot of, you know, yeah, just loaded, actually. Yeah, just loaded. I think you guys can see it on the screen. Finally, I was uh, not really showing the stats because some of these numbers weren't loading yet, but should be good to go there now. But anyway, CJ Krohn versus lefties so far this season, a 426 Woba. 238 ISO, 156 WRC plus. He is batting around 333. That's one of the numbers that's not loading right now for me. Hopefully that can get fixed soon. Seems like the numbers are updating uh, from the database I'm using right now because it usually does that in the middle of the night. So I guess that makes sense. But always like CJ Chrome versus lefties. And I'm not really looking to stack the Rockies. I hate the Rockies, especially on the road. I don't even really like them in cores these days. It's just such a bad lineup. But I think Chrome's fine. Versus a lefty, Madison Bumgarner, who if we look at his splits versus righties the past couple seasons, who before his last start versus righties was giving up like a near 7x fit and a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. And it was, I mean, you can always use righties versus Madison Bumgarner. I don't think that start he had last time out is gonna, something we're going to see going forward. Also had a good game before that, but I think that's a little bit of probably over his averages that we're going to see so far this season. Or I should say in the future of this season. Then going down to second base, Ozzy Albies, $5,000, super expensive, betting cleanup versus a lefty and Robbie Ray, and I do prefer Albies versus lefties. He has had better splits versus them the past couple of seasons, and I do like the Braves quite a bit today. I'm going to assume they're going to have the highest implied team total on the slate. Even if they don't, it doesn't really change my mind. It's still a good spot. I'm just trying to guess what Vegas is going to do here. Jake Cronenworth, not eligible at shortstop. He was eligible at shortstop for a couple of games. Even last time out, their last game was two days ago, so they took that position eligibility away, which kind of caught me by surprise, but still fine at second base today. 3800 bucks. Like the lefties here versus Webb, you can play righties against him as well, but 
just kind of a cheap part of a good team, which is always viable in my opinion. The Nico Hornier, Hornier, Hornier. I'm not really sure how to say his last name, but he's batting. He should be batting leadoff here versus the lefty. Only 3,200 bucks and a very small sample size this year. 26 plate appearance sample size. He's been hitting the ball very well. A 333 batting average with a 428 Woba. ISO just below 200. 460 on base percentage and a 172 WRC plus. Obviously, he's not going to keep that up all season long, but faces the lefty here in Great American Small Park. Now, unfortunately, he's facing a high ground ball guy in Wade Miley, so I hate using guys against ground ball guys because this limits the home run upside. And it just feels like whenever I stack against a big ground ball guy, it never really works out too much. But I do think you can use the Cubs here in the favorable park for hitting because he's not unhittable. I mean, I wouldn't have these guys listed on here, but they do have a pretty low implied team total of 4.11. So it's obviously not like a smash spot here for the Cubs, but you can certainly use some righties here versus Miley. And then going down to third base, we have Raphael Devers, 5300 bucks. I do think the Red Sox are a pretty solid stack today. Now, they are quite expensive, so it's never really easy to stack these guys up. But a couple of these guys are in some pretty good spots. Raphael Devers would be my favorite on the Red Sox today. It's right in the middle of the order, so plenty of RBI opportunities for him. And Ari Harris is not an amazing picture. pitcher. I wouldn't say he's terrible. I wouldn't say he's great. I would say he's probably average, maybe slightly below average as of right now. 4.8 implied team total for the Red Sox, which is... Currently the second highest on these slate. Now I'm going to assume it's going to get bumped down once we see the Braves and the Blue Jays totals come out. But I can definitely get behind some Red Sox here. He's got a 271 ISO in the season, so showing plenty of power. Batting average right below 300. Those numbers are boosted once he looks specifically at righties. So definitely don't mind Raphael Devers. Chris Bryant, 4800 bucks. He's been playing well this year. Also eligible in the outfield, so I could see that having I could see him having added ownership just because of the dual position eligibility. Same goes with Nico there because he's also eligible at shortstop. But Chris Bryant's batting 300 this season with a 419 Woba and a 313 ISO and a 613 slugging. I'm kind of curious to see what the hard contact is right now. So hard contact rate for Chris Bryant's only at 32.8 percent, which you'd think would be a little bit higher as well. He's been as well as he's been playing, but still like Chris Bryant here. Great park for hitting, and he gets that left righty on lefty matchup versus Wade Miley. Gio Urshela, 3600 bucks against Scooble. Do you like the Yankees once again? Kind of, not kind of. They really sucked yesterday versus, it was Jorge Lopez, right? Jorge Lopez was the pitcher. Pretty sure. Yeah, pretty sure it was Jorge Lopez. They didn't really do much. They scored a couple runs and then looked like Labrador Torres was going to get them the lead in the top of the ninth inning, but then he had the ground rule double. So I think it was DJ that couldn't come home and score because of that. So kind of got screwed there, but it's the rule. And they lost with the uh, guy on, yeah, the runner on. Second, right? In the 10th inning. I think that's what it was, but only 3600 bucks going against a lefty. Urshela's been fine this year. He's batting 280 with a 343 Woba. ISO above 200. It's in a pretty good spot in the order. I can definitely get behind Urshela. Now, assuming Judge is back because he did pitch hit yesterday, he's probably not going to be batting third or fourth, so probably get bumped down a little bit, but Fist's still fine if he does happen to hit right where we have him projected. And then going down to shortstop, Bo Bichette, 5700 bucks. Very expensive, but always a viable option especially versus a lefty here in Drew Smiley. But I like all the Blue Jays today, and he's been fine this season, batting 253 with a 253 ISO and 125 WRC plus, and then slugging above 500. So like all the Blue Jays, can't really discriminate anybody in the lineup for the most part. And then Corey Seager, 400 bucks. Don't really love the Dodgers today, because I do respect Betty Peralta as a pitcher. He got a good strikeout right Now it is a hitter-friendly park, and I wouldn't say I'm going to fade the Dodgers, but I'm not actively looking to use players against him. But I saw Corey Seager below $5,000, so I figured we had to at least mention him because that just seems like way too cheap of a price point for Corey Seager and how good he is versus right-handed pitching. And Peralta's a guy that will give up some fly balls while he does have a good strikeout rate. If Corey Seager can get a hold of one, I mean, he was like second in the league in hard contact rate last season, only behind the tee, so below 5000 bucks, Seager does grade out pretty well for me. Pretty much as a one-off, though, because I'm not really looking to stack up the Dodgers today. And Glaber Torres, 4200 bucks. Assuming Judge is back, he should hit a little bit lower in the order than he has been. I think he hit third yesterday, and he's been hitting third, fourth, fifth for the most part. So we're going to have to assume he's going to take a little bit of a dip here, but that's still fine. 4200 bucks for right now, the highest implied team for only slate close to five versus school ball, and the Detroit bullpen isn't that great either. And they're hitting in a hitter from the park at home in Yankee Stadium. So the one thing I don't like about using home teams is that they don't get those guaranteed out of at bats, and I'm going to assume the Yankees are going to be winning at that point in the game, so that's one bad thing, but I think they're elite options today. 
And then going down to the outfield, I think we have like 10 guys here, but it looks like a good outfield slate. Sometimes there's like no good outfielders, and sometimes there's just like a whole laundry list here. Kind of looking like that's the case today, but Acuna, if you're stacking up the Braves, really hard to leave him off your line, especially versus a lefty. But he, this so far this season, 97 plate appearance sample size, he's batting 350 with a 500 Woba. Here, I'll pull these so you can see them. 498 Woba, close to 500. 400 ISO, 214 WRC plus, 1200 OPS with a 14% K rate, which is actually exactly what his walk rate is right now with an even one walk to strikeout ratio there. Just some elite numbers from Ronald Acuna. If you're stacking the Braves, you, you can't leave them off. It just makes no sense to leave them off your Brave stacks. If you're stacking Yankees, you got to play Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. Their prices are getting closer together because Judge was close to 6,000 and Stanton was in the 4K range. So I just was saying, just play Stanton instead of Judge. Now, it's been easier to say that because Judge hasn't been in the lineup the past couple of days. But I would still, I'd still probably lean Stanton here just because you can save 300 bucks and he's been hitting the ball pretty well recently. But Judge is... Just as good of an option as uh, Sharon Close Stanton today. Both guys hit lefties very, very well. Stanton is a, is a specific lefty smasher. Just absolutely kills them. Judge is still good versus righties, but both guys are excellent plays today. Jesse Winker, while he's very expensive, he's been playing very, very good baseball this season. He's batting 377. I'll pull these numbers over really quick. 475 Woba, 325 Vice, so 199 WRC plus with a 700 slugging. OPS above 1100 and Hard contact rate, which I believe was around 40, yeah, 45% hard contact rate. And looking at Stanton, he's at a 47% hard contact rate. And he had a missile the other day. I think it was like 119 some miles per hour, the fastest of the entire season, the best exit velocity on a hit. But it got eaten up by the third baseman, I think. It was a very impressive play. I mean, I know I couldn't catch 119 miles per hour. I don't think he caught it. I think he. I can't remember if it was a ground out or if he caught it, but either way, it was just lined right at the guy, and he made a good defensive play, but <laughs> this is kind of a funny number here, just looking at the numbers here. Aaron Judge, only a 3.8% soft contact rate, so pretty much he's going to kill the baseball anytime he's up. I think the numbers speak for that. I think you guys already had the idea there, but it's just kind of fun to look at some of those batted ball numbers because you're going to see what guys are hitting the cover up the ball and who is not. But yeah, Jesse Winker, Stanton, Judge, all just killing baseball so far this season. If you're stacking Reds, you play Winker, and you think you guys get the idea. Marcelo Zuna, someone played play Acuna, just obviously not as good as Acuna. But last season, he was amazing. This year, he's kind of kind of sliding a bit. 187 batting average with only a 0.77 ISO. He did go deep tonight, which is nice to see, so maybe he stays hot. But good spot here versus Robbie Ray, and he typically is very good versus lefties. Alex Verdugo is a fine option if you are using some Red Sox tonight if you're just stacking them up, but nearly $5,000 for Verdugo. Probably not going to get there as a one-off, just only parts of stacks. I just saw my spreadsheet uploaded again, so maybe we got some more things updated here. Yeah, just missing some pitcher splits versus lefties at this point, but for the most part, everything is loading. Eh? That's one thing I don't like to do this at night because some of the numbers aren't all the way updated. But yeah, like Verdugo here versus Ari Hard, it's not a big strikeout guy. George Springer, 4500 bucks. Finally back to the lineup. I think the first game was just a couple days ago. Didn't really do anything, but 4500 bucks for a guy in the course of his career has smashed left-handed pitching. Obviously, if you look at the numbers, they're going to show up dark red right now because he only played one game and he got four plate appearances and he didn't do anything with them. Didn't get a hit, so yeah, these numbers are going to look bad, but look. Super, super small sample size, so you can't put anything into it. Fair price point. Facing a lefty, I like it quite a bit. Randall Gritchick, similar play. Obviously, I like Springer more, but Gritchick's a fine tournament play if you're just full stack on the Blue Jays, or if you're doing like a one through five stack. Then a couple cheap options here. Willie Calhoun, 2700 bucks. I think Eovaldi is a fine pitching play today, but he can give up some lefty, a little bit to lefties. So Calhoun leading off, guy that hits for a high batting average, doesn't really have much power in his bat, but he's batting 306 so far this season. Should slide into the leadoff spot versus the righty. Think he's fine for the price. And then if you want an absolute free play, Kevin Kiermaier, two thousand bucks. He recently led off versus a lefty, or I'm sorry, not versus lefty versus a righty. Actually, that was it. That was today. That was an early slate, so it did feel like yesterday. But yeah, Kevin Kiermaier led off versus the righty, two thousand bucks. Didn't really do anything, but I think he got on base once, so he got like two points. But going against Lance McCullers, who was a good pitcher, and if the numbers did update, we can look at his splits versus. No, nope, still didn't update. Don't know which one, which one would have updated here, but McCullers since last season, I mean, he's a good pitcher. 25% K rate, 10% walk rate, which kind of is one of the issues with Lance McCullers is the walks, but overall the numbers are fine, but you're mainly just playing him for the price point in the spot in the order at $2,000. 
But with that being said, guys, I think that's going to be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure you leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I really do appreciate it. Follow me over on Twitter at ChrisPanel16, CPen16 over on IG. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, like I said, wait until Saturday, the first of the month, because I don't want you guys to get double charged. But if you do want to join the community, get access to the Optimizer, Discord community, ownership projections, projections, rankings, cheat sheets, day sheets, Discord community. I cover other sports as well, including NASCAR, which is kind of my big thing over here on YouTube. Link is down below for that. But I think that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoy the start to your weekend. Friday's my favorite day of the week. Favorite day of the week because you're not quite into the weekend yet, but you're just getting there. So you got the excitement building up. So, anyway, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Enjoy the start to the weekend.